For authentication with solutions like Active Directory, we may need an intermediary server to take the request and approve it after contacting backend solutions like Active Directory or LDAP servers. Radius is such an intermediary server used to approve access to the remote systems by sitting in between clients and backend central directory solutions. They help in facilitating authorization from the central directory like Microsoft AD, LDAP, etc. TACAX Plus is similar to Radius but provides additional security by using TCP and encryption. Hello, welcome to the next episode of Get Certified Together program by Technocoff. Your free online knowledge sharing community. Visit our website www.technocoff.com for more information. In this episode, we will be covering the next section of the CompTIA Security Plus certification exam. Let me start with section 3 for the CompTIA Security Plus exam, security implementations. In this section, I will cover various topics including secure protocols, host, endpoint, and application security, wireless and network security, AAA, and IAM. In topic 1, I will discuss about identity and access management, commonly known as IAM. Any system security can be compromised if access is open for anyone to come in and log in into the system. The identity and access management or IAM controls this using three steps: authentication, authorization, and accounting, more commonly known as AAA. Let us start with the I from IAM, which stands for identification. Identification is stage 1, where any user provides credentials or any other form of identification to prove his or her identity. Identification can be proved by usernames, access cards, or both. These methods are used only to claim the user's identity and doesn't imply that the person identifying himself is authenticated or authorized to enter or perform changes in the system. For example, my username to enter my website Technocoff doesn't mean I can change the website layout as well. Only when I prove my authorization as admin of the website will make me able to change anything. For physical devices or locations, biometrics can also be used as an identification method. Let us move to the next important aspect of IAM, that is access management. Access management covers AAA, authentication, authorization, and accounting. I begin with authentication first. Authentication is used to prove the claim of the user's identity. That is, if I show my identity card or submit my email ID as a username, how the system can know that it is indeed me and not someone else with my details stolen. It can be achieved using three strategies or factors. First is something you know, like passwords, PIN, or access keys. Second is someone you are, like biometrics using fingerprint or retina scan. Third is something you have that is token devices or OTP-based authenticator apps. These strategies are often recommended to be used as combination for improved security. This is widely known as multi-factor authentication or MFA. For MFA, strategies combined must be different. For example, password and security questions together are not termed as MFA since both are something you know strategies. Successful implementation of the MFA can be determined by two indicators, often asked in the exam as well. The first is false acceptance ratio or a scenario where the wrong user is authenticated by the system. The second is false rejection ratio or a scenario where the right user is denied by the system. An ideal MF a solution must consider both and find a crossing point between two indicators where chances of incorrect user acceptance and correct user denial have a 50% probability of happening. This crossing point is called the crossover error rate. Second A in triple A is authorization. Authorization provides rights to the user once the identity claim is proven. by authentication factors authorization recommends the policy of the least privilege and separation of duties this is to ensure that the users only have limited rights to perform a function without consolidation of admin rights in a few hands last a in triple a is accounting accounting begins with account management which involves creating maintaining 
and removing unique users or service accounts. Accounts can be either standard user accounts or privileged user accounts with advanced admin access. We may also have shared user accounts used by multiple users or systems. Now that we have an idea about AAA, let us deep dive a little into different technologies to perform authentication, authorization, and accounting. I will start with authentication first. Authentication, as we have heard, most of the time relies on password-based access. Although with advancements in security, there is a continuous recommendation to switch from passwords to the more advanced forms like certificates. We keep that discussion aside for this podcast. Various protocols can be used for successful password-based authentications. PAP or PAP is password authentication protocol, which is unencrypted and considered insecure. The advanced version of PAP is CHAP, which is Challenge Handshake Authentication Protocol. CHAP uses a secret key and is considered secure. These days, we also use Single Sign-On, or SSO, which allows the user to use the same credentials across multiple devices using federated authentication solutions like Microsoft Active Directory. For authentication with solutions like Active Directory, we may need an intermediary server to take the request and approve it after contacting back-end solutions like Active Directory or LDAP servers. Radius is such an intermediary server used to approve access to the remote systems by sitting in between clients and back-end central directory solutions. They help in facilitating authorization from the central directory like Microsoft AD, LDAP, etc. TACAX Plus is similar to Radius but provides additional security by using TCP and encryption. LDAP, or the Lightweight Directory Access Protocol, is used to query information from the centralized directory service. Often, LDAP is used with LDAP servers, which provide the capability of authentication directory services. Kerberos is another authentication protocol for authentication using ticket-based session keys. Microsoft AD uses both Kerberos on port 88 and LDAP on port 389. for authentication and querying information another important term used while discussing various ways of authentication is SAML commonly known as SAML SAML stands for security assertion markup language it is an open standard used to share authentication information among different web applications for single sign on discussed earlier it designates these applications as the service providers and the identity providers A service provider is a federation partner that provides services to the user. The identity provider authenticates the user and provides an authentication token to the service provider. For example, if I want to sign in to a mobile application using my Google account, then the Google authentication server will act as an identity provider while my mobile application is the service provider. The exam may have questions related to different types of providers in SAML. Another technology similar to SAML is OpenID. OpenID is used similar to SAML, but while SAML has more features and is exclusively used for single sign-on among web applications, OpenID is a simpler protocol used for authentication among two servers, which can be mobile or web applications. It is mainly used with OAuth, which authorizes single sign-on access among two applications. So far, we have talked about authentication using passwords. with backend services like Microsoft AD and intermediaries like Radius servers we discussed authentication using single sign on provided by OpenID and SAML one missed out area is accessing servers or virtual machines running with the Linux operating system they provide a unique and secure mode of authentication using the technology we discussed in the episode 4 it is key based access on the ssh protocol This method involves generating an asymmetric key pair with the user keeping the private key while the server keeps the public key. For the authentication request, the server responds with a challenge message. The user encrypts the challenge message with the private key mentioned before and responds to the server. The server decrypts the message with the public key from the same key pair and if successful, authenticates the SSH session for the user. Same as authentication Authorization also follows certain strategies and principles. Let us understand some of the important and commonly asked authorization controls in the exam. Remember, we talked most important rules for authorization. 
they are the rule of least privilege access, and separation of duties. First, and foremost, we need to understand the concept of access control. Because, with authorization, what we're trying to achieve is control of users' access rights. Access controls can be applied to the user's access in two ways, mandatory access control, or MAC, and discretionary access control, or DAC. Mandatory access control, is used when access to users is defined by the system, or organization, and cannot be modified by users themselves. Discretionary access control, is used when users are provided with permission, to modify system access as they fit. For the file level, discretionary access control allows the user to create a list of users, and their permission from read-only, to read-write, based on their requirements. In Linux, we follow a numbering system for access controls for files, starting from 0, to 7. 0 means no writes, while 7 means, read, write, and execute, writes, or simply put, full writes. One of the most important access control, used in day-to-day -day IT and business setups, is role-based access control, or raw back. Role-based access control, is used for the authorization of the group of users, on a common authority level, using the role assigned to them. For any new user, simply assigning a particular role, can provide necessary access rights to the system needed for the day-to-day -day work. Any user not assigned to a rule, shall be treated with the implicit deny policy, which means the user cannot do anything, unless the rule is applied. Another access control type is, attribute-based access control, or ABAC. Attribute-based access control, is used for the authorization of the group of users, based on their attributes, like job grade, manager, dates, etc. Advanced form of the ABAC, may include the location of the user, or, time of the day restriction, to allow the user's access, only when they are in a specific location, or at a specific time. Let us move to account strategies now. Despite assigning a rule to authorize user, and factors to authenticate, user credentials including usernames, and passwords, remain a critical point of the attack. There must be accounting strategies in place, forcefully implemented, to keep the security, and maintain hygiene, of the accounts. The first, and most important strategy, is the account policies. Account policies, involve password management. Password management, is one of the key topics covered in the account policies. Password must be long, with unique letters and a combination of uppercase, lowercase, numbers, and special letters. Password must be changed, after every fixed interval of days. Password must not be reused. Second strategy for account management is, account monitoring. Account monitoring, is required to identify the abnormality in the user account's activity. It may include, someone logging in the system, at unusually odd hours, or trying to access an account, from a location, other than the office. Geotagging, and geofencing, are some of the techniques to determine a user's location, when accessing the system. Another strategy is the account life cycle. The account life cycle, involves the creation, and deletion, of the user account, when an employee joins, or leaves the organization. This process can be automated, for the scheduled termination of the account. I want to cover more topics, but seems like this episode will get longer, if we continue. So I will cover topics like endpoint security, network, and wireless security, in the next episode. This brings us to end of the episode 6 of the Get Certified Together podcast from Technikoff, on the CompTIA Security Plus exam. In episode 7, I will proceed to the next topics of the domain security implementation. Thanks for listening.